Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. This is the back of a Lenovo laptop that I have. So this is, oh God, Lenovo G50-70, is it? Model name 20351. Um, I'm hardly gonna get a QR code off that in fairness. Uh, but this is it. Problem with this is we have a motherboard fault and I'm gonna take pictures of the board and I'm gonna bring you through the troubleshooting as I did it. Back in a second. On screen I have the picture of my motherboard. Now what I did to get this on screen is I took seven different pictures and I threw them to Photoshop and I said please stitch them together for me and this is the job that it did. And I may have said this in a video before but if you ever want to see a competition of human between computer, you know they always have like Gary Kasparov, you know, Deep Blue, human chess player versus computer chess player. but try and do a better job at stitching photographs than a computer. This took Photoshop about 15 seconds to stitch together four images. This would have taken me, <laughs> I don't know how long, maybe four hours, but this is what we're looking at. So what I'm gonna do is the way I normally start off with these, check if we have our main 20 volt power rail. This is a Lenovo, so Lenovo's are all 20 volts. Uh, there is actually a cable that comes in here. I've just chopped out this section because we don't need to see the fan and we don't need to see where the adapter comes in. So I'm gonna focus in on the section right here and you'll see how this turned out when I zoom in to 100%. So this is 100% right here. Came out quite well, didn't it? So, here are our two red wires here and our two grounds and this is where our red wire hits the board so this should be our 20 volts and we can even see it it's 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 easy to see where it goes on this particular board we have a fuse right here so we're coming from our input pin across a fuse we have pl706 and pl708 which are two inductors so that carries the voltage across to here this is our mosfet so our four pins here are together and our three pins here are together and this is obviously our gate pin right here where the voltage goes here is actually underneath and across here to our second MOSFET uh, where we have our three pins together right here and a gate pin here so our two gate pins are tied together and then once it passes through this MOSFET we meet PR301. Have a guess what PR301 is. Yes, this is our current sense resistor. So this is our main 20 volt power rail. So as you can see, this one is quite nicely, you know, if you're a learner and you had the schematic beside you, this is nicely linear on the board itself. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take a few voltage measurements and just see if our 20 volts is first of all making it onto the board and then see is it coming through our two MOSFETs and onto this inductor right here because this is our main 20 volt power rail. So let's do that now. You know the drill. Voltmeter in the 20 volt range. That's volts DC. We find the ground which right here I'm going to take as just this port here we could take ground from here or we could find it at one of the other holes in the board as well but I'm gonna get ground from here and we're gonna start measuring so this is where the red wire comes in and hits our motherboard so I place my probe here and I find that we have 20.44 volts at this point so how's our fuse doing well let's check so we're following the 20.44 volts across the fuse and measuring here. So when I measure here, I get 20.44 volts. So our fuse is good. And I'm gonna jump across these as well. So these are our two inductors on our path into the motherboard. So measuring here, I measure 20.44 volts also. So we're good to this point. With 20.44 volts right here on the input to our first MOSFET, we need to see if that 20.44 is coming through. So 
it actually comes across to these pins right here so I measure here and I have 20.44 at this point this travels underneath this chip right here and across to our second MOSFET and I measure 20.44 here also just for clarity I've tried to convey here that our 20.44 goes underneath and onto the pins of the second MOSFET so we have 20.44 to here so what I want to do is measure on the other side but when I measure here what I get is 0 0.89 volts at this point so this is meant to be our main 20 volt power rail that goes out to the rest of the motherboard but I'm only measuring 0 0.89 volts so we've got a problem somewhere here on the input and we need to find out what it is I'm going to check the gate voltages next because we have a gate of the first MOSFET here and a gate of the second MOSFET here but they are tied together as you can see so just before I put the puzzle to you I've marked in that we have 20.44 here 20.44 on the input to the first MOSFET and on the output of the first MOSFET and on the input to the second MOSFET however when I measure here which is the gates of the two MOSFETs I see that there is 20.36 volts yet the first MOSFET is seemingly switched on however the second one is switched off because there is nothing essentially coming through we on, we've only 0 0.89 volts well at least that's how it seems but how can you account for the fact that the gate on both MOSFETs has 20.36 volts one appears to be turned on yet the second appears to be turned off so I'm going to give you a few seconds just to think about that what's the reason for it starting now okay I, I hope you've worked it out I'm not even sure it's possible to fully work it out from what I've described there but I'm sure a few of you have had a, a good guess but if you look at this I've removed all the markings for the moment just so we can focus on these two MOSFETs. This is a 4407A. This is a 4483A. Okay. Now I'm sure a couple of you spotted this, but it's a 4407 ending in an odd number. That means that this is a P-channel MOSFET. This is a 4483 ending in an odd number. This is also a P-channel MOSFET. Now we've seen with the N-channel MOSFETs that are usually on the inputs of these types of laptops that you would ha normally have the two gates tied together but they would normally be 25 volts or so but that's for N channel so to switch on a P channel it should be a lot lower but still we're getting 20.44 coming through here so what do you think is happening well what I decided to do was to switch my multimeter to diode mode plug out the power completely before you do any diode mode testing place my red probe here and my black probe here and I measured the diode on this so that was 0 0.46 volts however when I measured the voltage on this MOSFET right here place my red probe here and my black probe here I measured 0, 0.000 volts so just to confirm I swapped my probes around not that it was really necessary and I also measured 0, 0.00 volts so I took this MOSFET then off the board to be sure and it turns out this MOSFET is shorted so that is how our 20.44 volts is making it through it's nothing to do with the gate signal switching that MOSFET on it's the fact that this MOSFET is shorted so the next thing I decided to do was to replace this 4407A which is a common enough one and I have a good few of these types of Lenovo laptops so I was easily able to pull one of these off one of the other motherboards get a replacement and put that in place 
So having replaced our 4407A and switching my multimeter once again into volts DC in our 20 volt range, I decided to take a few more measurements and see if it made any difference. So we obviously had 20.44 volts on the input and I decided to measure and see what was happening on the other side of that. So when I measured here, I found that there was 20.44 volts right here and as we established earlier on that travels through and underneath here. So I was just curious then because that's the same as what we had the last time so I measured the gauge voltage but when I measured the gauge voltage this time I measured 5.17 volts on the gate which is what was required to turn on the p-channel MOSFET. So now in anticipation of having the same gate voltage required to turn on a p-channel MOSFET on the first p-channel MOSFET it's like a tongue twister I had that same gate voltage on my second p-channel so I decided to measure after the second p-channel MOSFET and I found now that there was 20.44 volts at this point and through our current sense resistor as well so that is the correct gate voltage to switch on these two p-channel MOSFETs. So this is our main 20.44 volts power rail and that's how I brought it back online. And just to double check it, I know this BQ737 chip, that's actually an abbreviation for a BQ24737 power management IC. I know that this pin right here is meant to be the same as our main power rail. So just to double check it, I checked right here, and if you can see, I could only use the little letters right here, but I measured on pin 1 that we had 20.44 volts on this as well. So I knew then that my main power rail was making it around to the rest of the board as well. So that was an interesting one, um, another easy enough fix, um, and that's how it's done little bit of a curveball this time because we're normally used to having two n-channel MOSFETs right here but as you see from this implementation sometimes they have p-channel MOSFETs on the input as well so that is my video for today I hope you all enjoyed it please write any comments you have down below and I'll see you on the next one